um, morning. Um, thanks for um, giving me the opportunity to um, present here at the school. Call. I will um, try to, in 15 minutes, grow uh, for those who don't know how to cope so I will quickly through uh, the main strategic topics and then uh, I'm in the hands of Ben who will uh, shoot better forecast questions. Um, I will go immediately into the Q4 in, uh, in brief, I think, atmosphere in brief, I think you can know otherwise you will not sit here. Um, how does it look? Um, stable demand on the industrial side, tough on the mining side. I don't think it's also a surprise for anyone in you. Our service business continue to develop in a good level. Can it be better? Of course, everything can always be better and, uh, and faster. But I believe it's um, giving the, the growth in the world I think uh, we're doing pretty well. Um, still some work to do on adjusting the suit on the mining side. So uh, we're really uh, lowering our capacity in that area. And last but not least, finally, after uh, a battle of uh, many, many years, we succeed to uh, get married with Edwards. Or they uh, succeed to marry with us, depending on what side you are. So let me talk um, part of that. So now it's fully uh, in the hands of uh, Atlas Copco, uh, fully paid, everything is done. So now uh, the real part start to work. But before I go on the, the real part, just to highlight a bit the acquisition rationale, because uh, in some uh, meetings I have with you or with your colleagues, um, not always it is well understood why we did that. No, first, vacuum, if you look further in the future, is an attractive market. The world will need vacuum, and not today, not tomorrow, but within 10 years, the will be same as in compressed air. Edwards, as a company, is, um, has a lot of competence, a lot of top engineers, as leading edge technology. So that was also one of the reasons why Edwards was such a nice um, target for us. And I think they really the products and the service they live there are extremely critical for the operations of the customers. Ask the Intels or the Samsung of this world, and you would hear it immediately when they talk about their facts. And last but not least, Edwards is also serving a market which is well known to us. We did research before we did that, when we acquired the company and even were looking further. We did a mapping, and you see more or less 70% of compressed air customers are also using vacuum. So there's a lot in the market, a lot of synergy uh, potential in that. But um, before I um, go further to the strategy of, um, of uh, Atlas Copco, I would like to do a small demonstration and show you really how close the synergies are in between compressors, as you see here, and vacuum. And I've uh, brought one person who will show me that, and uh, Philip Bennons, he is heading our technology uh, group in Atoscopco, and I asked him when he showed me that a couple of weeks ago, he said, I think that's a good, simple way to show to the audience where are the synergies or potential synergies between compressors and vacuum. So, Philip, show us how what we take easy with, it is. What we take with us is a small oil injected screw compressor. What we use that today in the range between 5 and 15 kilowatts. So that's yeah. the, the, that is the, the small, medium-sized industry. Yeah. And so I will first show you how it works as a compressor. So when you have kids really here, we can help you. So, 
this is a compressor, I think you understand that principle. And then just taking the same machine. And now you see we no focus focus. And just running the same direction. As close as this it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I convince someone more that there are synergies between vacuum and compressors? So, that was my point. So, I hope now when we have the next conversation that we can talk about the future and grow and that I don't need to defend myself and I'll defend. So, you are on my side now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Thank you.